Drake at Arts. And today I'm going to interview John Muratore, who's a wonderful classical guitarist. John, thank you so much for having us here in your beautiful home on this bright sunny day. Well, thank you for stopping by with your oh, equipment. Pleasure to do it. I believe you're going to start by playing something for us. So yes, I'd like to play do. a allegretto. It's the first movement of a sonatina by Federico Moreno Toroba. It was written around 1930. Wonderful. <laughs> it's a treat for me sitting so close to see the, see all the fingering and to hear the sounds so clearly. It's just wonderful. Thank you. How did you get into playing classical guitar? Well, my, um, my uncle Angelo, yeah. Angelo Melosi, he was my mother's brother. He was a barber by trade, uh -huh. cut all of our hair. My, I have three brothers who so used to come and we'd have hair cutting sessions, but we also have musical sessions. He played uh -huh. the guitar. Uh, on the side, he played in wedding bands and, and various other kinds of things. And he fell in love mm -hmm. later in life with classical guitar. Okay. He must have heard some recordings or met some people. Yeah. And so he started learning some of the basics. And then when I 
received a guitar at about age nine or, oh. or so. I played the ukulele before that. My mother played ukulele and sang. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I learned those four chords. <laughs> and I knew there was more. And, uh, and I knew that, that my uncle played guitar and I was always fascinated with that instrument for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Then the Beatles came along, of course, uh -huh. and I was really fascinated with, with uh -huh. guitars. And, but he wanted me to learn classical guitar. And so he gave me a foundation uh, that at the time I didn't know, really know what to do with. It wasn't the thing I wanted to do. Yeah. But uh, I learned enough that later on when it became, uh, something struck me and I decided mm. this was really the greatest thing. I had, a, I had enough of a background yeah. that I could adapt you know, that technique and then learn more, obviously refine it. Because sure. I've been playing guitar all along yeah. since I was a little kid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I would, I would practice for where my uncle came over, but then I would do what I wanted to do. But Ooh. then, later on in life, when I started studying more seriously, it was a ro role reversal. I started teaching him about the oh, classical guitar wow. because he only could go so far because he had like two lessons. Yeah. In, in, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, mm. and then so it was a fun, yeah, it was, it was an interesting transition. And, uh, mm. But it was never uncomfortable. So oh, and that's nice. that's, and I never looked back. Cool. So you played other kinds of music on the guitar before yes, yeah. really getting into the classical yeah. style. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, what other kinds of music do you like? Uh, I like a lot of jazz. Uh, oh. I love solo piano jazz. It's one of my favorite huh. things uh, to listen to. Um, but I also like Latin American jazz, uh, okay. Brazilian music, uh, some of the tango stuff. I love Ast Asta Piazzolla. Uh, I play, and I get to play some flavors of that with a trio that I work with sometimes with a saxophonist and a cellist. And you play classical guitar with I them? I play this instrument. Uh, but my, not in the classical with, style. Well it's, well, it's it's an interesting thing. It's it's still a classical guitar and it's still mostly classical. Yeah. It's all classical technique. Yeah. And the other two guys are more the improvisers than me, but I provide the, the basis yeah. and, and I've done a lot of the arrangements and that oh. sort of thing. And that's a spinoff of, I used to have a duo with an accordionist. Oh wow. Uh, Roberto Cassan, who unfortunately passed away a couple oh. of years ago. Ago. And so this this trio that I'm working with now is sort of an outgrowth of that. Nice. Some of that same music that was very Mediterranean, Latin American okay. kind of cool flavors. Hmm. So you've played all over the place, apparently. Could you mention a couple of the places that well, you've played? Well, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a connection uh, in Paris. Um, at the American Church in Paris has the Atelier, uh, Atelier uh, concert series, and I've mm -hmm. played there probably... I don't know, at least 10 times over the years, like every yeah, other wow. year I go there and, and do a concert. And I'm also fortunate enough to be able to go to Graz, Austria every Ooh. summer yeah. and work with singers there. We they do a Spanish concert uh, amongst many, many other things. That it, it's called Ames American Institute for Musical Studies. It's mostly uh -huh. a vocal institute. Huh. And my wife and I both go because she teaches the audition techniques uh -huh. and I help out with the Spanish program. Okay. So I get to do accompany some of the singers, Whoa. play a few solo pieces there on that, so that's that's wonderful too. And um, But it's always great to go other places mm. and find new audiences and uh, yeah. you find that the, you know, the Austrians just love Spanish music. Really? They, oh my okay. goodness, they just, they just melt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was going to ask, do you have a favorite place, but from your description so far, it sounds like you have multiple places yeah. that you really enjoy and you get something different yeah. from the different places. Right. Yes, that's true. And uh, I mean, I played uh, for a couple of weeks in, in St. Petersburg, Russia, Whoa. Uh, many years ago, yeah. a little concert tour. And those were some of the best audiences I've ever encountered, uh, even though th th there was a language barrier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they were just afterwards, they would just come up and just be huh. gesturing and speaking anyway, even though I didn't know too much <laughs> of what they were saying other than spasiba. Uh, but uh, they were just the most heartfelt, huh. uh, among the most heartfelt people, you know, just great art lovers and yeah. uh, music lovers. Great. Because uh, uh, music can speak to people yeah. even if you don't have a common language. Right. And uh, also on different levels. You know, mm. you know, everybody brings their own experiences to it and there are sure. it's, it's, if you've had a lot of experience with music you hear different things than what someone who hasn't but they still yes. appreciate it in their own way. Yes. So that's great. <clears throat> So you, earlier you mentioned you have a lot of stories about learning the guitar or playing the guitar. Well, <laughs> well yeah, in there different was a, situations. Well, okay, here's one. The uh, when I was a freshman in college, yeah. I was not a music major. Huh. Uh, two of my brothers had pursued engineering, and okay. I was always good in at least in high school in the math and science yeah, yeah. areas. And so I thought, well, maybe that's what I should do too. And um, huh. and so even though 
I think it was a superficial uh, success on my part because I could always figure out formulas and what numbers to plug in, even if right. I didn't understand what I was doing. And I realized very quickly that all these other engineering students were not like me in that they really cared about it, first of all, okay. and they understood yep. all of it. Yep. And I was like, oh, well, I don't mm -hmm. really understand what's going on here. And my roommate, at, my roommate, just by chance, was a music major. Uh -huh. His name was Bill McCabe. It's Bill McCabe. And he was a singer and a clarinetist. Whoa. So he was quite an accomplished musician. But I had had some theory somewhere along the way, maybe in high school, and um, I would help him with his theory homework, and I thought, this is oh. really cool, he's studying this stuff. And he would tell me about the guitar majors there, and he yeah. said, you know, the guitar majors, some of them can't read music very well, I thought, well, I can read music, and I, and I saw, Whoa. <laughs> and so I started, I got to put the bug in my head, thinking maybe, you know, maybe there's something huh. to this. And then one night, I s just sat up all night, didn't say, I laid down, tried to sleep, couldn't sleep, and just decided, this is what I'm going to do. Wow. And I went and spoke to the, to the professor yeah. of guitar there played a few things for me, it was very encouraging, and nice. uh, and so then I changed after the first year to, uh, to well, music. Good for you, that's kind of a, a slightly scary change it to is. go from Yeah, well not when you're, you were when you're a kid, it's not as scary to my parents. Oh, uh, okay, there's that. <laughs> for me yes. it was like, oh, this is, this is what yeah. I want to do, so. So I've heard things like that described different ways. There's things that you're good at, but you don't necessarily enjoy yeah, and get yeah. satisfaction from. And then there's things that you really like to do, but yeah. maybe you're not so good. Yeah. And if you're blessed, yeah. there's something you're really good at that you get great satisfaction and personal nourishment from. And so I'm glad that, that you found to pursue it. classical I know, guitar very, very in this lucky, way. Very lucky that yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you feel like playing another piece for us? Sure. Um, okay, this is probably the quintessential Spanish guitar piece, but. It's everybody, a lot of people's favorite. Hmm. This is one of those things that if you're playing for an audience full of guitar, classical guitarists, you yeah. don't play. Okay. But when you're playing for general audiences, it's, it's wonderful. It's called Recuerdos de la Alhambra. It's, it's uh, Reflections on the Alhambra oh. Palace in, in Spain. And it's written by uh, Francisco Tarrega, great uh, guitarist, composer of hmm. the late 19th, early 20th centuries. And uh, it features a technique called tremolo, which is a repeated... Yeah. Like on a mandolin, you would yeah, hear. Yeah. Uh, so the melody's in the tremolo, and then the thumb is playing up the harmony. So it oh, sounds wow. like two things happening wow. together. And I'm sure you've heard this piece, everybody's heard this piece, but it's, it's a very nice one to play.
very nice. <laughs> now you've got me intrigued. That, that's very nice, very pretty, and very approachable. So why would you play something else for an audience of classical well, guitars? Because they've all played it and they've heard it a million times. So, and, they, and, and a lot of people have the attitude, you know, the old chestnuts, okay. uh, you know, why play those? But I like it. Huh. <laughs> and I know that people, other than, like I said, guitarists who've played it a million times, uh, everyone else, general audiences, just lo I mean, they just it's love that so piece. Pretty, yes. that's, all, that's always the, in, almost, you know, invariably, that's the one people mention. I say, sure, I love yes. that yes. No, tremolo piece. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. so of the two pieces that you just played for us, uh, which is more technically challenging? Well, they have, they're both very different. Uh, I suppose the, 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 uh, Toroba, the first piece I played, Toroba Tariga, at least yeah. like. But anyway, the first piece probably has more diverse uh, left hand movements uh -huh. and possibly right hand movements too, because in the in the in the in the Tariga, in the uh, tremolo, once you get that technique down, yeah. it's like it's kind of an automatic okay. situation. Okay. Hmm. And although people spend a long time trying to perfect that, and so uh, it's know, not easy, it right, like, to get it evenly mm -hmm. and, and without thinking about it. Yeah. And, uh, and and the left hand challenges in in the in the tariga, there are a few, you know, stretches mm -hmm. and things, and, mm -hmm. and 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 it's more exposed, I suppose, in a way, because there's that melody and there's the accompaniment, and that's yes. you know, so if you miss one or the other, it's kind of obvious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So from your description of this, you're not really going for the technically difficult. You're going probably for something musical. I don't know if you could describe yeah. that a little bit. Well, um, I think the musical aspect is always the most important because yeah. that's what touches people. I mean, people can get excited about the pyrotechnic display. Sure. And I have a few of those kinds of pieces, uh, and it's fun to do. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but it's not the most interesting thing to me huh. because it's 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 more about how you can move people or bring them on a journey somewhere. Sure. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So when you choose your pieces, do you uh, generally pick them ahead of time or modify them or pick them based on the audience response? Um, we ask sometimes, or what seems to flow on a program. Okay. You know, I think about like start with this and then move into that. And sometimes I like to, I like to group pieces that Huh. aren't necessarily meant to be played together, but yeah. they have, I find, some affinity or uh, some relationship yeah, between yeah. the two and or three and, and group them that way, yeah. you know, as opposed to doing necessarily three pieces by the same composer. I might put something in the middle of two pieces by the same composer yeah. that's related to that. Yeah. And sure. so I like to be a little creative that way. Yeah. And then uh, also, if I'm playing solo, then I like tend to play only pieces that I like. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that sounds good. <laughs> and, mm. But I, that, I, that I think other people might find interesting sure, as well. Yes, yes. Um, so that's, uh, it's, but it's always fun to find new, new things as well or make new arrangements. Are pieces. there composers now uh, composing for classical guitar? Yes. Oh, yes. And is it pretty much in the same style as in the past? Not or necessarily. No, there's some very contemporary, okay. very contemporary pieces that uh, you know that fit into the into the realm of contemporary music. Okay. And uh, I, I did a CD several years ago of all all ah. contemporary music and two two world premieres, um, one piece by Scott Wheeler and another piece by Larry Bell. And I mm. did uh, then also in addition to that some other 20th century pieces. So some by Piazzolla. So some mm. that were not as as uh, avant garde uh -huh. uh, sounding yeah. as some of the other ones on on that. And then. Um, and then to, to balance that, I have a CD that's just called Favoritas, which is all favorites, uh, <laughs> like uh, the one okay. you deserve. Sure, and, yes. uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then one of my favorite CDs that I've done in project is, is a, called Noel, A Classical Guitar Christmas, and it's um, huh. mostly arrangements that I did uh, yeah. of hmm. hymns or carols or oh. folk songs. Huh. Uh, there's one transcription of an organ piece uh, called mm. Noel by Dakan, which is uh, I never thought was possible, but it turned out it was. Wow. Sort of. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why, so I titled the CD Noel after that. And uh, and that's all, that's been a very, very popular um, CD, but also I do concerts in support of that every, every uh, December. Nice. And uh, so it's a repertoire that I keep coming back cool, to. Yeah. And it's very special to me because a lot of the arrangements, it's, it's more of my own arrangements uh -huh. as well. And, and I find that to be pretty cool. Uh, sounds like that's a nice organic rhythm that you do it uh, around Christmas each right, year. Right, right. So something and then do it a lot and then you let go. And and then, right. And then, do, and then have to relearn it every year. Which is <laughs> <laughs> do, do you find uh, that you 
uh, I'm not sure how to express this, find something different or new depths or something. Oh, yeah. In yeah. the uh, oh, repeating the piece after a period of being to. away from you it. You have to, otherwise. Well, either that or you could just learn new music all the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I always I, I find things in pieces that I've been playing for 20 years. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'll say, oh, you know, this that phrase could go that way or this, you know, I'll yeah, hear sure. something or yes. a, a, another voice that, that relates in a different sort of way or I might want to play it a different way. And that's and also in the in a performance too, um, it's nice to hear I always hear things differently when I'm performing than sure. when I'm practicing. Huh. I mean, which is I guess good because it's huh. it's not the same thing. Hmm. Right? Performance is a whole different thing than sitting playing by yourself. And so but I'll hear things differently and I might play something a little different and I'll think, well and I, I hopefully I don't think of at the time, oh that was interesting because <laughs> You don't want to do a self, you know, evaluation. Yeah, you should either be doing it or analyzing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, right. But but it'll just happen, you know. Yeah. And uh, huh. and I find that happens pretty frequently. And it, it, it may not be a giant thing, you know. I'm not changing notes. I'm not. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, just phrasing something differently or doing something differently with the dynamics or bringing hmm. something out a little bit differently, and and that's fun too. But I could play. Yeah, you know, I've been playing some pieces for a very long time, and. Hmm. I don't get tired of them because of the nature of the music too. True. You know, it's interesting enough, and that's why it's great to to perform these for people because, you know, like like I said before, you know, depending on their levels of experience with music, some yeah. people can you know, really hear what going on as far as the harmony or the modulations or the mm. texture or and other people just hear it in a different way, mm. but it, it hopefully they can all be transcended by it, which is, I think, mm. uh, that's always the best thing that anyone mm. can say is when they say, oh, I was transported somewhere else, oh, you know, nice. while you were playing, I don't know where I went. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, yes. uh, and that's nice because that has to happen, it has to happen to me while I'm playing. Mm. Uh, at some point, it always does. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually the beginning of a concert is like, you know, nuts and bolts here I'm playing, and then, but it, as it goes along, mm. you forget you're playing, you forget you're playing the guitar. Oh, wow. There's this, like, it could be, you're just there. And yeah. you know, with the music, cool. and, and hopefully the, the people, the audience can can share that as well. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, you really get into a flow state of you're just yeah. doing it, or even almost being it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you ever make mistakes? Of course, <laughs> definitely. W what happened? What What do you do just when you make going, a mistake? Keep going, <laughs> and don't think about it. Yeah. You know, say, oh no. <laughs> you know, I've made enough of them that they don't bother me anymore. Okay. But, uh, uh, but you know, it's it's that's. Human, uh, I think that's to me that's part of the live performance is that there's yeah, always I mean, the you don't potential. Want to stop and say, "Oh my God!" I no, but there's, there's the mistake. potential of you know, everything being wonderful yeah. and being little mistakes. But that's part of being human, like you said. Yeah, I mean there are different. I mean there are technical mistakes where you just finger didn't hit the right thing and make a little a splat. But yeah. the, and there's also sometimes like memory things uh. happen. <laughs> and, but those, you know, I'm, I'm usually able to always able to work around as well. Yeah, I'll just mm -hmm. keep playing something until. <laughs> Like that, it will not stop. You know, someone was telling me about a concert that they went to recently. Actually, it was a guitarist, and they said, "Yeah, he stopped twice oh. and apologized." Oh, you don't, I don't oh, think no. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Never try never to let anybody know because you think it's obvious. You yeah. think this is so obvious yeah. that everybody's going to say, "Oh, I'm so sorry about that spot." But people say, "Well, that was just flawless." Mm. And <laughs> you know, yeah. you I know the person playing it has done it so many times that every little thing is going to sound like this big, sure. but it's not. It's nowhere. Nothing like that experience for the listener, unless you make it. You yeah, know, but that's make not a big the deal point out of, of the yeah. thing. Yeah, you want to just keep going because because the people don't want to see that happen either, right? It's 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 um, and that's the nice thing to think about is that I feel like when I'm gonna be playing or or if I'm playing with a group, whatever, that we are there to put the audience at ease. Sure. Right. Yes. It's not like we want them to be comfortable. Yes. And listen, yes. And not. You know, be on edge. Yeah, I, I would guess audiences are generally rooting for you. you know, whoever you, the performer, <laughs> right, might be. Right, right. But you want, you know, it's your job to, to put them into a, a state. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 it's a privilege. You know, it's a privilege for any musician hmm. or instrumentalist or what is it, or dancer or they have to 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 perform hmm. because you know you get to do what you love most for these people. And yeah. So I like to look at it that way too. Cool. You know, don't say, "Oh, I got, I have to play." You know, <laughs> I get to play. You know, I, oh, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm that's lucky. completely different. Yes, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So we're going to have to wrap up soon. Could you tell us one more story, if you wouldn't mind? <laughs> um, let's see. Let me think of. Let me think of a, of a good one. Um, hmm. 
I'm not coming up. So anything me. about you know a performance, or you already spoken a lot about learning the guitar and yes, yes. Uh, choosing to make it your career. Well, one time we were, I was in Arkansas. I had a, a a gig there for six months. It was a very interesting thing with a flute player who huh. had gotten uh, money from the state government. He was a real. He was a good. Wheeler Dealer. Yeah. This is back in the uh, late 70s. Okay. And, uh, and we played all over the state of Arkansas. That was our job, was yeah. to go bring music to people. Oh, Schools, cool. festivals, cool. concerts. And we had this one chamber music concert where we had brought in some other musicians. And it was in, uh, I believe it was in Little Rock. And we had gone to the bus station to pick up this fellow's girlfriend, and she got in the car, and she had a lot of stuff, and so I took the bag of music and put it on top of the car, uh -oh, and we drove uh -oh. away, and we drove away, uh -oh. and not until we got back to the hotel, I said, where's the music? Uh -oh. I said, oh my gosh, we traced our steps back, couldn't find it, couldn't find it, and then he, uh, he called his, all, everybody he knew, and he knew a, uh, a music store people in Washington DC who sent some music out on a plane oh the next morning gosh. and picked it up. So we had most of the stuff there. Oh wow. So and we th there were slightly different editions and that sort of thing, but we figured it out. And then we got to wow. the venue for the, we got to the venue for the concert that evening and he got into the room first and he was screaming. I said, What's what what? He said, The music, the music and some, <laughs> someone had delivered it to that. Oh wow. they had seen this bag of music on the street, saw in the newspaper that we were playing. This is you know, this is before the before the internet. Saw it in the newspaper that we were playing yeah. at, at this such and such place and just delivered the music there. Wow. Which was kind of a miracle. That's great. <laughs> what yeah. a cool story. Yeah, yeah. So John, thank you so much for well, letting you. us interview you and for performing for well, us. I look and for forward our story. To Yes, so uh, I'm Tom McGarry for Drink It Arts.